Just a quick heads up regarding this one, because IRL circumstances played out the way that they did, this video ended up being made in multiple parts, filmed weeks, if not months apart, and in various different locations, and you can definitely tell. As I was editing this, I kept stopping and thinking, well, that's a little bit jarring. It still functions as a tutorial and it shouldn't have any impact on the pattern. Just consider yourselves warned. Now let's get back to the original introduction I filmed, I don't know, like eight months ago at this point. Welcome back to the channel if you've been here before and hello if you're new. Today we are digging through the junk trunk in order to make our second trash to treasure crochet project. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, a couple of weeks ago I made this video. So I'll put a link for that down in the description and you can check that out and it will explain everything. If you're already in the know, basically what we'll be doing in this video is following a very similar format to the last one, except this time I'm going to attempt to include a tutorial aspect. It won't be in my standard pattern and tutorial style that you usually see in my other videos. I'm instead going to try and explain the what and the how of creating this project as I go in a manner that's still hopefully easy to understand and follow along with. Okay, so last time I chose an object that I didn't have an idea for and it ended up being my little cactus wall art thing. And I'm using the word art very loosely here. But this time I selected a couple of things because I already had an idea and they will fit in nicely with that, I think. So what I chose, is a box from some cling wrap, an empty box, and some tea light candles. I have so many of these, I just keep finding more. I've got like 30 kicking around. I don't know where they've come from because I don't use them. It's probably my sister's fault, but they just keep multiplying. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you my idea yet. I'll let you find out what it is as we go along and as we start doing the tutorial. But I'd be interested to know what you guys would do with those objects. So if you had a box and some tea lights, what would you make from that? and some yarn as well, because we're going to be crocheting. You're going to need that. While you answer that, I'm gonna hop on over to my crochet table and get started on this project. If you would like to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need a few basic supplies. You're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors and a needle. You can also use stitch markers if you would like, although they aren't strictly necessary. You're also going to need some sort of stuffing. I plan to use yarn scraps for this, but you can just use normal polyfill stuffing. The materials that you saw at the start, the box and the tea light candles, they are optional. With the box, you're going to need any sort of long narrow box, something like cling wrap or alfoil comes in and the tea light candles, just tea light candles. Obviously we don't want anything getting set on fire here. And the final thing that you're going to need is yarn. With the yarn, because we need multiple shades, what I'm going to do is in a moment, go through them in their own little section, just because I want to be clear about what we're using here. So first up, you're going to need five shades of brown yarn. We're going to do one in light, which is brown one, brown two, brown three, brown four, and brown five. And they are in order from lightest to darkest. You're also going to need a light yellow, a darker shade of yellow, orange, and white but i can't show you the white because i accidentally used it up in another project but i think we'll be okay if i don't show that on camera You're going to need all of these colors plus white however if you have difficulty getting five shades of brown if you've only got two or three what you can do is crochet the project with those however you'll want to be careful not to stack those colors on top of each other too much and what I mean by that may be a little bit confusing at the moment, but as we get into this project, you will understand what I mean by stacking the colors. So if you're planning to crochet along with me today, grab your yarn and let's dive straight into this project. For this first piece that we're going to be making, we're going to need three shades of our brown yarn. We'll be using brown three, brown four, and brown five. This pattern that I'm making now is just going to be the bottom section of my piece but you're going to need to crochet several more pieces and I will show you those later. However, to create all the pieces, 
you're going to use the same pattern just for the taller ones you'll need to extend it a little bit and again i'll explain that in greater detail later on but for now we're going to start with brown number four you're going to make a slip knot and then chain 15. From this point, we're going to use two colors for every row because we'll be making squares. We're going to start row one with seven single crochet. Start in the second chain from the hook and we're going to do one, six and then on number seven we're going to change color so that means we need to go into the stitch yarn over and pull through but we're not going to finish the stitch at this point just drop your brown number four yarn and you're going to bring in brown number three line that up behind the head of your hook then you're going to yarn over in brown number three pull through the two loops on your hook to change color we should have seven stitches left in our chain and we're going to single crochet those in brown three. You're going to work over the tail end from the color that you've just changed to, brown number three, but we're going to leave the tail end from brown number four where it is, because as we come back in row number two, we're going to pick that back up at this midpoint again and continue crocheting the row with that. So seven single crochet in brown number three. When you reach the end of the row, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And this time we're going to begin with seven single crochet in brown number three. And then on seven, I'm going to change color. I'm going into my stitch, yarning over, pulling through. I'm going to drop brown number three. I'm going to pick up brown number four and change color to that. The final seven stitches of row number two are going to be crocheted in brown number four and we're going to be leaving brown number three here so we can pick that up in the next row. For row three, chain one and turn your work. This time we're going to start with seven single crochet in brown four and finished with seven single crochet in brown three. And that is row number three done. What you're going to do now is continue to crochet rows four, five, six, and seven the same way we've done the previous few rows. So for row number four, we're going to chain one, turn our work. We're going to start with seven single crochet in brown three, finish with seven single crochet brown four. Row five, chain turn, we're going to start with brown four, finish with brown three, and you're just going to keep swapping until you reach row number seven. I'm on row seven and I've done the first six single crochet in brown number four and I'm about to do the color change and do my last seven stitches of brown number three. However, for rows eight to 14, which is our next set of squares, the colors that we're going to be using are brown four and brown five. Because my brown four square is here and in my next repeat of squares, my brown four square is going to be this section. What I want to do is carry this brown yarn with me across the brown three section to the end. So I can swap to it there and then continue crocheting my next set of squares. I'm going to change color to the brown three, go into my stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then pick up my brown three yarn. And previously what we've done is we've dropped our color at this point to pick up later but this time we're going to work over it to the end. I'm going to single crochet my first brown three stitch and I am working over the brown four yarn and I'm just going to continue doing that all the way until the end. Three, four, five, 
and six. On my last stitch, stitch number seven, we're going to change color. So I'm going to go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. I will drop my brown three yarn at this point, pick up my brown four, yarn over and pull through. So now in the next set of squares, rows eight to 14, I'm ready to start off with my brown four yarn. At this point, you can cut your brown three yarn and I like to cut a little bit of a tail so I can work over it to secure it. And I am going to get rid of this. Get a bit tangled there. Don't need you anymore. And I'm going to bring in my brown number five and have that ready to go. So for round eight, I'm going to start in brown number four. I am chaining one. I am turning my work. And I'm going to do seven single crochet in brown number four. And I'm also working over this tail end from brown number three. If you would prefer to weave that in later on, you can do that instead of working over it. But I find this way is a lot quicker. Six. And then on stitch number seven, we're going to change color again. So I'm going into my last stitch, yarning over, pulling through dropping my brown four yarn but this time I'm going to bring in brown number five change color and I'm going to do my final seven single crochet of row eight in brown number five for row nine chain one and turn your work and for this row, we're going to start with seven single crochet in brown five, swap to brown four, and then do the last seven single crochet. And that's row nine done. Rows 10 all the way through to 14 are going to be the same thing. You're going to chain one, turn your work, do half the stitches in one color. So for round 10, that's going to be round number four for seven single crochet. Do the other half of the stitches in the other color. And again, in this case, that is round number five to finish. And you're just going to repeat that back and forth like we did for the first two squares until you reach row 14. I'm on row 14 and I'm just about to start my final seven single crochet in the dark brown, brown number five, which is dark brown. And I'm going to work over the brown four yarn just to secure it. And like I mentioned before, if you prefer to weave your ends in, you can do that. But just make sure that you're securing it somehow so it doesn't unravel later. Once you've reached the end, you can cut the brown four yarn and we'll get that out of the way. And then what we're going to do is leave a fairly long tail for sewing. I've decided to sew all my pieces together. However, if you prefer, you can cut a short tail and weave that in and you can either single crochet or slip stitch your pieces together later on. But I think I'm going to go with sewing at this point. That may change, it depends how difficult it is to put together, but at this point I'm going with sewing. So I'm going to pull up with my hook. Before we go on to the next part where I'm going to show you all the different pieces that make up this project, you can customize this to fit whatever size you like. Now what I mean by that is, where is my box? Here it is. So this is the box I'm using for my project, which you saw in the intro. And the pieces I've created, I have made to fit this. So the side pieces fit, see they're just larger than the box. There's a little bit of space on either side. Same with the bottom, there's a little bit of space on either side. And the same goes for the top, obviously. Now, if you're using a similar size box, you're probably going to be okay, however, if you A, don't have a box, or B, you are using a different size box, you may need to change up the size of your square. All you need to do to change this 
is alter the number of chains that you start with. So I would recommend chaining an odd number because we're working in the second chain from the hook, that will then give you an even number to work with with your single crochet. For example, I started with 15, my odd number, which gave me 14 stitches to work with. And that meant I could have seven single crochet in each square across. If you decide to change that, you will then need to change the number of rows for each set of squares to match. So I did seven single crochet in each section. So there's seven single crochet here, seven single crochet here, and I've done seven rows of those colors. So there's seven rows here and seven rows from here to here. Say you start with 21 single crochet in your foundation chain. That means you're going to single crochet 20 across, 10 in one color, 10 in the second color. That means you're then going to have to do those colors for 10 rows. So you've got 10 single crochet across, 10 single crochet across for 10 rows. I hope that makes sense. And this will allow you to change out the pattern as well if you don't want to use a box or any sort of inner structure at all. You can just tailor it to your preferences, but it's fairly simple to do. Again, just alter your foundation chain. And now that we've covered that, we're going to go on and see the rest of the pieces we need to crochet for this piece. And at this point, you may be able to guess what we're making. And these are all the pieces that we need to crochet. Can you guess what we're making at this point? <laughs> if you do have a guess, put that down in the comments below. I want to see how many people get it. I think quite a few will because it's, it's not very subtle. <laughs> all these pieces are made using the exact same method that we used to create the first one. You're going to start by chaining 15, or if you altered your pattern, you're going to use that version. And then we're going to single crochet 14, seven in the first color, seven in the second color. And then we're going to make rows of seven and just repeat that over and over again, changing colors as we go. So it's a really simple pattern. All you need to do is repeat the same thing over and over again, basically. What I'm going to do now is put up each individual piece on screen so you can see what colors were used in the piece and how many you need to make, what that piece is called, etc. And if you're following along, you can go off and crochet all of those, and then you can come back here and we'll get to the assembly stage. The largest pieces that you'll need to crochet are the side panels. You're going to create three of the full ones. And then for the final fourth one, you're just not going to crochet the last two squares. So as you can see, this one here has a darker yellow and an orange square on the top. For the third side panel, you're going to leave that off. This leaves room to put, you know what? I'm not going to tell you that now because that's a surprise for later on. But if you would like your thing that we're making that I'm sure most of you know already, but I will try and keep it as a surprise for those who don't. If you would like it to light up, that is what this gap is going to be for. That means that if you would prefer not to have yours light up, you can crochet four panels with the last two squares on them. So you're going to do four of those. For these panels, we are going to start down the bottom here. This is where, this is our starting point here. You're going to chain 15 and then the colors that we're going to use, I will put on the screen now. So you're just going to follow those colors all the way up until you finish. If you would like, you can also make your project either taller or shorter. To do that, you're just going to leave out some squares. So you can stop at this point and have the top of the project here. You can make it a lot longer. It really comes down to personal preference. So those are the side panels. Create four, either four of the same or three of the same and one without the last two squares. Of the other pieces that we need to crochet, we've already created the first one. That's the one we did together. And that is going to be the bottom of our project. This one in the center, I haven't done squares. Instead, I've just done 14 single crochet by 14 rows. Again, I began by chaining 15, working 14 single crochet back, and then just doing that for 14 rows. 
The reason I haven't done squares in this piece is because it won't actually be visible. This piece is actually intended to go inside our project, so no one's going to see it. However, if you would prefer to make that the square pattern like these two as well, you can absolutely do that. The third and final piece here is the top of our project. And I've done that in white, yellow one, yellow two, and orange. And our starting point is here, the white down the bottom. Although it doesn't really matter, you can just turn your square around if you start from up here. And once more, that is made exactly like we made the first piece. However, we've just changed up the colors. So you're going to need to make one each of those as well. And once more, when those are done, we will come back with all our pieces ready to go and put them together. Alrighty, at this point, this project has dragged out way too long. Uh, so much has happened over the last several months that I just kept putting this off and putting this off, but it's got to be finished. I've got to do it today. What we're doing now is we're grabbing all the pieces that we've crocheted, the four side panels and the three squares, one for the bottom, one for the top and one for the middle, and we're going to assemble them. Now, I'm not 100% sure how to go about this because I've never constructed a crochet piece like this before. I've never crocheted the separate pieces and then put them together that I can remember at least. So basically, we're going to wing it here. I'm going to start with the bottom piece. And let's get organized here. All right, I'm going to have this. Um, let me get rid of these ends first. I'm going to have this with the right side facing upwards. So that's like the good side and that's the bad side. So I'm going to have that facing down. And then with my side pieces, I'm going to place them with the right sides together. So again, this is my bad inside piece. And I'm going to single crochet them together. Actually, I might sew them because I left a tail for sewing. I might sew them together. So I'll sew the first one on like this. Then I'll flip that out. I'll bring in the next piece. And again, with the right sides together, I'll sew that and then flip that out and so on. <laughs> so on, no pun intended, until I've done all four pieces. Okay, that's the, that's the plan so far. As I said, I'm kind of winging this because I've never done this before. And after that, I'll need to sew the sides together, but I'll also at some point need to insert my box and I'll have to put the center piece in because that is going to hold the candle. But we'll worry about that later. Let's just put this part together first. All right, that's one side done. And you can sort of see, well, not sort of, you can really see where I've sewn them together, but bad luck, basically, that's staying. I think there is actually a way you can join squares and stuff with like an invisible seam, but I'm not sure how to do that. So that might be something I'll look up for my next project if I do something like this again. Okay, I'm going to bring in piece number two now, and I'm just going to sew that on as well. So right sides together. Okay, all four sides are sewn on now, and I'm just going to weave this end in through the backs of my stitches here so it's nice and secure. And that's what we've got so far. Again, stitching's pretty ugly, and also, I probably should have used maybe this brown. I can't remember what brown that was. Was that brown four maybe. I should have used that or even this one to sew the sides together, but oh well, it's not too bad. Um, what I'm going to do now, I think, is leave these pieces right sides on the inside, so as it is. And no, actually, no, yes, I will do that. I will do that. And I will single crochet. I'm not going to sew this time. I'm going to single crochet the side pieces together 
but I'm only going to single crochet up to or to the last of the brown squares. I'm going to leave the yellow, orange and white squares free because I'm going to single crochet up to there and I think at that point I'll put the box in and then I'll sew this to the inside section here. Okay, I'm going to try that again. I'm winging this, so I may bugger it up completely, but we'll just have to have a have a crack at it and see how we go. I've kind of got two options here. I've got these two browns that I can use to single crochet the edges together. I do have three more, but I, I have another project in the works that I'm saving those for because I'll need those three colors for that. And I don't really want to, you know, waste it on this. Even though it won't be much, I'd rather keep it for this other project. So I'm thinking I'll probably use this darker brown. I probably prefer that. And most of the squares on the outside seem to be darker anyway. There's only a few lighter ones. So I'm probably going to go with this. I lost my center pull. I did have a center pull. It's just a lot easier if you can get that going. And yep, yarn everywhere. That's how this usually goes. Let me find the end here and then I'm going to begin single crocheting these sides together. So it's probably a bad idea. You know what? Just go back in there. Get in there, all of you. I'm just going to use this bit. in there. All I'm going to do is join my yarn down at the very first row of each of the squares here in there and I'm going to go through the other square as well. I'm going to join with a slip stitch and then I'm just going to single crochet all the way down working into the end of each row and through both squares. And that's one side complete. I'm just going to cut a bit of yarn so I can weave that in. And I'm just going to have a little sneaky peek how it looks on the outside. Again, you can see the stitches, but eh, it's not bad. I can live with that. So all I'm going to do now is repeat this entire process on all the other sides. And when that's done, I'm going to put this box in. I'm going to add some stuffing to it. I'm going to be using old yarn scraps for that. And then I'm going to put that in there to give this a bit of structure. But we'll need to close up these sides first. And that's the last side done. So what I'm going to do now is just weave in these ends that I've left. I've weaved in all the ends now, so I'm just going to turn this inside out. And that's not looking too bad. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to just double check that this actually fits. <coughs> I have a whole bucket of yarn scraps here and I'm just going to use those. But I honestly, I think I might have made this too big, though I plan to fully stuff the box. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. But there's probably way too much room, even if I overstuff the box. So I'm thinking I might have to ditch that and just add, add the stuffing. And that's going to work out okay. I think I'll just, as I stuff, I'm just going to make sure that my, 
my cube shape here actually maintains its shape. And I'm just going to continue adding all my yarn scraps. Fortunately, I have about three buckets full and then some jars on top of that. So I don't think I'm going to be running out of yarn scraps. And oh, look, here's my prototype for this project. That's in my yarn scrap box. All right, at this stage, I've got, it's a bit lumpy, but that's what happens when you use yarn scraps. I've got most of my yarn scraps in and I've still got a little bit to go, but what I want to do is sew on my center or inside patch here. And I'm going to be sewing that onto each side just below where the white and yellow stitches are. So between where the brown stitches end and the white and yellow stitches, stitches start, that's where I'll be sewing this. I'm going to sew this on to three of the sides, probably like this one, this one, and this one. I'll be leaving my shorter side free. And I'm just going to leave a little gap on this side so I can add my final bit of yarn stuffing at the end there. Yeah, I think, I think I'll proceed like that. That's what we're going to do. So I need to grab my needle again. And I'm just going to sew this onto here. And I'm also going to be working only through the backs of my stitches. Sorry, Spider, you're going to have to move. You're in the way. So I'm only going to go through the backs of my stitches like this. So if I flip that over, you can't see the needle from the front because I don't want my white stitches to be showing through here. There's yarn. There's just yarn everywhere. Okay, I'm going to sew three sides on and then we'll figure out and then add stuffing and then we'll figure out where we go from there. Alrighty, that's three sides done and I'm going to add the remainder of my stuffing now. I did plan to sew up this side after I'd done that, but I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn left to do that. Instead, what I think I might do is add the stuffing, but then I'll need to sew these orange and yellow sides together. And I'm going to attempt to do that. Hmm. I was going to try using one piece of like one length of yarn and I was going to try and close up this section with that as well but I'm not sure that's the best way to go I might do it in like two separate pieces that might be better but first of all I'm going to add the rest of my stuffing and then I'll weave in this end so it's nice and secure Okay, I think I'm good on stuffing at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just weave in this, and oh, there's so many yarn ends, I'm not sure which one's which, but I'm going to weave in this end, and then I'm gonna have a think about how, or the best way to close up these sides. But that's, that's the next step, we'll do this first. I've grabbed my dark yellow yarn and I'm going to use that to sew these pieces together and I figure if it does end up showing through the white or the lighter yellow it doesn't matter too much because this is a lot well <laughs> I was gonna leave it as a surprise but I'm sure most of you already figured it out it is a Minecraft torch so it's a light and I figure it won't be too out of character if there's like yellow bits on the edges it's very it just adds a bit of light like detail so i'll be using this but i'm also going to use it to sew up this last gap from my white inside piece here i'll do that first and then what i'll do is i'll sew up the side here back down the side here i'll probably weave my yarn across then do this side and do the same here with my yarn across and do here so I don't have to stop and keep reattaching my yarn 
but it depends how much yarn I need and how long I end up cutting this. All right, I'll give myself a bit of length. I'll give myself a bit of length to work with. And I'll start here. This is a really awkward angle to try and film at. But I hope you can sort of see what I'm doing. Ah, uh, bugger, I picked up a bit of this green yarn. It's okay, it's just scrap, I can cut it. Get back in there. I finished sewing this gap closed and now I'm going to start sewing the sides together. And what I'm going to attempt to do is work through the backs of the stitches here as well so you won't see the dark yellow but as I mentioned earlier if you do see the dark yellow it doesn't matter too much I mean it'll just fit in with the, the rest of the torch really but that's what I'm going to attempt to do at least anyway So you can see a few, but that's not, it's not too bad. I'll take it. From this point, what I'm now going to do is weave this end just straight down through the backs of my stitches here until I reach the, this corner and I'm going to sew this side together. Um, I'm not trying to be neat here because this is going to be hidden on the inside and no one's going to see it. So I don't care if it's a little bit messy. And now that I've weaved my way down to this corner, I'm just going to sew this side. Once that's sewn, I'm going to repeat the process of weaving back down. I'm going to sew up this one and then I'll do it for a third time and then sew up this small side here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see any of this because it really is a very awkward angle to work with, with the camera positioned above. And this thing is way too tall to sit under it. Like, <laughs> that's how high up it reaches. All the sides are now sewn up and I'm just going to take a few minutes to do a little bit of cleaning up inside of here. I'm going to weave in some ends and I'll just cut the ones that I've already worked over just to make it a little bit easier to work with going forward. And now that that's done, the only thing we have left to do is to sew on this top piece. And I've left a long tail already. So I'm going to use that to sew it on. And I'll be once again attempting to sew through the backs of my stitches so you don't see any of them on the outside but we'll see how we go with that as well but it may not be entirely possible I did manage it a little bit here but you can still see some but it's not that big a deal so I'm going to weave in these little ends and then I'll be attaching that The sewing's all finished, so we are on the home stretch now. I just need to weave this end in so it doesn't come loose. Then all I have to do is add my little light to the top. I don't think that's going to be bright enough. Um, let me that light off. <laughs> you can barely see that at all. So I might need to get a brighter light at some point. 
but that is the minecraft torch all finished it didn't work out quite how i planned seeing as i made it a little bit too big to get the box in but that's all right i can either use the box in another project or i can make a second torch and just make it a little bit smaller or use a thinner yarn because this this was eight ply but it was a thicker eight ply than i usually use so that's probably why it is a bit bigger but other than that i think it turned out okay for pretty much winging the majority of it it's something that i might revisit at some point because i do i do enjoy minecraft and i would like to have a functional crochet torch so we might revisit this someday so let me know what you think would you like to see an updated version of this pattern and i might do it next time in my usual format that's a little bit more structured i don't know i'd be open to making that but for now that's all we're going to cover in this video Thank you all for watching and I will see you next Friday with a new video.